Hello and welcome to this special edition of Badminton Unlimited, where the focus will be on Europe's finest shuttlers. Coming up, we get on a Zoom call with Carolina Marin as she talks about life in Spain amidst COVID-19. We have to really be careful in uh, around all Spain because uh, in many cities, the, the COVID is still going on. And we revisit the time when Babington Unlimited swung by Marin's home in Madrid and met her beloved furry friends. Plus, top women's doubles pair Gabriella and Stephanie Stoiver give us a glimpse of what it's like living in one of the world's most visited cities, Paris. Behind us is the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> we didn't expect that we can come. So one day we will yeah. come and live in the city yeah. <laughs> of love. <laughs> <laughs> Spain is uh, much better than before because uh, when I came back from the old England it was uh, terrible and uh, at that moment but uh, actually it's, uh, it's getting better but um, you know sometimes when you just uh, watch the, the TV news and uh, all those things it's, uh, it's a bit hard because uh, you can see that um, many people right now is, is again getting the, the COVID so we have to really be careful in uh, around all Spain because uh, in many cities the, the COVID is still going on. It was very impressive when I arrived in Spain because um, I arrived on Sunday afternoon and uh, the next day on Monday uh, everyone was uh, at home but uh, actually when I traveled from Sevilla to Huelva to my hometown uh, nobody was on the road uh, when I when I was in in my hometown nobody was in the city so it was like uh, an unbelievable moment for for me because um, I used to see so many people in the street uh, many many cars on the road so I mean it was really impressive for me to see that moment. Actually, uh, I am a person that uh, when we have uh, this kind of um, difficult uh, part in our life, uh, I used to take the positive things. And uh, one of these is that um, for, for us, I think it's very usual to, to give uh, a kiss or, or a huge to to your mom or to your dad or to your sister or brother. But right now, in, in that moment, you have to be really careful about that because maybe you don't know if you have the COVID or not. And, uh, and maybe it's, uh, it's the best that uh, you cannot give any kiss or huge uh, your, your family. And for me, for me personally, it was really strange because uh, I used to live in Madrid in the, at, at the National Center. But uh, when I used to travel to my hometown, uh, is because uh, I just want to meet all my family. But in that moment, I just, uh, I've been at my mom's house and uh, I couldn't meet uh, anyone in my family. So for me, actually, it was really, really strange. My daily routine right now is just, uh, I woke up around uh, 7.30 in the morning and um, I'm going for the first practice at uh, 8.30 and we start at 9 until 11. We have the tactic, tactical uh, session in, in, in this time and then uh, I have uh, a little bit uh, physical uh, training from 11 to 12. Uh, I used to do sometimes uh, legs or sometimes just to some weight for my arms. Um, then I have some rest and, uh, and then I, I, I'm going back home and I just uh, cook and prepare my food for the lunch uh, and then I just uh, come back again for the second session in the, in the afternoon. At, uh, I'm leaving home at 3.30 and we start from 5 to from 4 to 5.30. And then from 5.30 to 6.30 or 7, we have uh, the physical training again. And some days I, I used to do from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, my rehabilitation, I mean, my, with my physiotherapy. So it's just the, the massage time and the relax time. Well, I think uh, 
because I have more time now I'm uh, living at home and, and then I have time for, for cooking because uh, I love to cook uh, but uh, normally I don't have so much time uh, because of my practice and all the this stuff and I used to, to live in the National Center but uh, right now I'm just going back home have time for, for cook uh, also just uh, watch some series or films so yeah I used to cook everything. Right now, I mean, uh, I know many dishes from India, some, uh, some of the sp spices uh, from India, or maybe some noodles, uh, some, of course, Spanish food uh, as well. But uh, I mean, every, everything is uh, healthy food. Uh, I think mainly just to be competitive. Uh, because uh, um, as everyone know I am very competitive uh, person and this thing is maybe the, the most thing that I really miss and of course just to, to meet the, all the players I really miss a lot. Actually I don't think, uh, I couldn't think uh, so much about badminton because I, um, I had a personal situation that um, I mean, my focus was on that, so I couldn't think uh, a lot about uh, what is going uh, on on the tour or, or what will happen on the tour when uh, when we will start. So actually, I mean, my personal situation was it was really hard for for me personally. So all my focus was on that. Actually, personally, um, I was lucky uh, to. Uh, to the decision that uh, the Olympic game was uh, postponed for one more year because um, as I said before my personal situation was really hard for me and all my focus was on that and um, actually I can think that I have one more year for to be ready and uh, of course I will I will be so ready for that because uh, I really want to to win one more uh, gold medal at the Olympics. First of all, I just uh, want to, to say thank you, thank you so much for all the love that uh, all my fans uh, show me in, uh, in this moment right now uh, about my personal situation. It was really, really tough, it was really hard. Right now it's still hard, but uh, I just uh, try to, to get uh, better and better. I just try to keep my focus on my practice, give my best as always. But uh, guys, thank you very much for all your love that you, you give me right now and during all my career. Thank you guys, I love you. Pues bueno, cuando no estoy entrenando, este es un poco mi, mi hobby favorito, que es pasear a, a mis perros. Cuando tengo un poquito más de tiempo, sí que les descuido más, muchísimo más. Y, y nada, aquí disfrutando con ellos. Eh, él es eh, el macho de la familia y ella es la, la muñeca. Eh, él se llama Thor. Eh, es, eh, no sabemos muy bien qué, qué raza es porque es una mezcla, lo, lo rescatamos desde, desde Málaga y, y ella es una mezcla también de Alaska Malamute seguramente con, con Husky. Ella se llama Azuka eh, y también la rescatamos de, de una familia que, que, bueno, que ya no quería, no, tenía muchos cachorros y, y no quería tener tantos y entonces pues eh, han sido los dos rescatados. Sí, bueno, pues los nombres eh, ha sido porque, bueno, mi chico, eh, cuando yo le conocí ya tenía a Thor eh, y Thor viene, pues bueno, como todos sabéis, por el superhéroe. Eh, y Suka viene un poco porque no sabíamos qué nombre ponerle, entonces yo busqué en la página de Alaska Malamute, puse nombres de, de chicas, de perras, y, y Suka significaba velocidad. Entonces, como normalmente suelen ser perros muy veloces y ágiles, pues ese nombre me gustaba mucho y, y así les puse. 
Bueno, las personalidades, las personalidades son bastante diferentes, como podréis ver. Eh, la única similitud que tienen es que son los dos muy tranquilos, pero bueno, eh, Thor tiene ya seis años, entonces eh, él siempre ha sido un perro muy, muy tranquilo. De hecho, duerme 16, 17 horas de las 24 que tiene el día <risa> y, y ella ya todavía es más cachorro, tiene año y medio. Entonces, Suka le gusta más jugar, eh, muchas veces le, le pica a Thor para que juegue con él, pero bueno, la única similitud que yo creo que tiene es que son los dos muy tranquilos, como podéis ver. Sí, bueno, eh, me encanta que me reciban porque les echo muchísimo de menos cuando, cuando estoy fuera en los torneos. Es algo que es lo primero que quiero ver. De hecho, pues bueno, cuando hablo con mi pareja por el móvil siempre me, me enseña a mis perros porque bueno, les quiero muchísimo y se les echa mucho de menos. Eh, nunca, yo creo que por eso mismo eh, nunca he podido crecer con, con animales. Yo creo que por eso mismo eh, ha sido por lo que me encantan muchísimo los animales. Eh, a mi madre le dan pánico todos los animales, entonces nunca hemos podido tener eh, ningún animal en la familia, solo pájaros y algún pescado pequeño, pero nunca perros. Entonces a mí siempre los perros sienta a todos. A mí siempre los perros eh, me han encantado y de hecho el poderlos tener ahora es una suerte. Yo creo que lo que hace Madrid que sea especial es eh, la maravillosa ciudad que, que tenemos por, por todo lo que hay. Eh, creo que Madrid tiene muchas facilidades en el sentido de que eh, cualquier cosa que necesites encontrar aquí lo puedes encontrar porque es una ciudad muy grande donde lo tiene todo. Eh, bueno, podéis ver, pues tenemos el Palacio Real, la Almudena, tenemos eh, muchos sitios muy bonitos, tenemos muchos museos también que visitar. Entonces es una ciudad que está claro que, que la recomendaría mucho. Eh, pues cada día ya se, se es muchísimo más, más reconocido, sobre todo porque entre que salimos en los periódicos y salimos en las televisiones, pues la gente nos reconoce más. Sí que es cierto que, que ya es imposible salir a la calle y que una persona no, no me reconozca. Para mí, mmm, yo me siento muy orgullosa en el sentido de que el que me reconozca a mí significa que, que sabe que, que juego a bámito. ¿no? Entonces que mi deporte sea popular es lo que más me enorgullece a mí. It's time for a quick break here on Badminton Unlimited. When we come back, Bulgarian sisters Stephanie and Gabriela Stoyeva take us around their adopted home, the city of Paris. It's pretty amazing to visit uh, the center, the Eiffel Tower, the museum. It's really amazing and to be here we are very happy. And Swiss Paralympian Karen Suter Erath shares her motivations to continue playing at the highest level at the age of 49. Welcome back. Three years ago, sisters Gabriela and Stephanie Stoeva made the brave decision to move to Western Europe in a bid to improve their game. We followed the women's doubles duo around the city of love as they showed us why they could not have picked a better place as their second home. I actually didn't expect to move in Paris to yeah. live. This was unexpected <laughs> plans. It, it happened really fast that we moved to Paris and practice and change our coach also and it's uh, really good. This is typical for uh, France to see people in the cafeteria sitting, uh, drinking coffee. Especially Fridays on yeah. the weekends which they're not uh, busy with the job. With the, You can see the kids going and uh, going out and playing around. So it's it was a little bit strange, yeah. Yeah, completely strange for us to see like, even in Bulgaria they have like people going out and sit, but not like this um, in the neighborhood. This is good for us, we, we can see different uh, culture and different, uh, different style of living in, for another country, which is nice for us, we, can, we will have a big experience in our life. <laughs> the city of Paris is amazing. The worst thing is that uh, when it starts snowing, then we can, uh, cannot have like a lot of snow like in Bulgaria. But it's pretty amazing to visit uh, the center, the Eiffel Tower, the museum. It's really amazing and to be here we are very happy. <laughs> Behind us is the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> um, for us it's very special because we, for the first time we see her when we come here. We watch her only on the movies. 
or the pictures and we didn't expect that we can come. So one day we will yeah. come and live in the city yeah. <laughs> of love. <laughs> From love. We, we're very excited that uh, we get chance even to go on the top. So yeah. we hope uh, we can go again. <laughs> I don't like messy things. <laughs> I'm, I'm directly going after her all the time because she's very big mess. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe because for this uh, we are a very good combination. You need to have balance one. Um, she's more like uh, this kind of type, like more like a uh, boy type, you know? Don't like to go to make her nails. My sister is after me cleaning. Uh, when we are going for some tournament, I'm not packing the bags because uh, if I go, then we start fighting. Uh, I'm putting some clothes here. She doesn't like the place where I'm putting it. This is not like uh, making uh, the clothes are not good uh, looking here. Don't put it. So better I stay like <laughs> in separate room, different room. <laughs> and I'm leaving all bags to her. She's packing everything. We are texting most of the time because for me, for me, if I'm somewhere alone, it's some, like some piece of me is missing. <laughs> but on the app uh, Uber, we are connected. So if yeah. someone uh, order uh, Uber, then the other one know where she's going yeah. or something. So, so just need, need to know everybody where she, uh, when, if she's going somewhere or I'm going somewhere. If you know we are not together, <laughs> but uh, most of the time we are together. We do exactly same things going in exactly same place just when sometimes when she's on date with some boy or me we're separate yeah, and we don't text each other yeah <laughs> the atmosphere here it's uh, amazing when you go inside in the church um i cannot describe how i feel just um it, when you go inside, it's just amazing with all candles, the things which are inside. So um, I love all the time uh, we try to, if we have time, to come and uh, put some candles inside and just wish to be healthy and everything be okay. And don't have injury and just to have a nice time. To going to church uh, when we are only me and she is uh, reminding us for our parents because we cannot spend time with them so much when we are traveling and uh, having tournaments. So it's uh, really relaxing and we are happy to do it when we have free time and we are really enjoying it. Thank you, Paris. We love you. Merci, Paris. <laughs> 2019 was a special year for Badminton Ireland as it celebrated its 120th anniversary in November. Founded as the Badminton Union of Ireland in 1899, it later became one of the founding members of the International Badminton Federation. Started in 1902, the Irish Open is also one of the oldest badminton tournaments. Badminton Ireland CEO David McGill spoke to Badminton Unlimited about how far the sport has come in Ireland since the inception of the Federation. 2019 is our 120th anniversary, so it's a really big year, it's a big milestone for Badminton Ireland. Uh, we were formed in 1899 and uh, that was off the back of two clubs having a dispute on court, which does tend to happen, and they decided they needed a governing body to help resolve these issues. So on the 25th of November uh, 1899, those two clubs and some other clubs formed and they formed the Badminton Union of Ireland. It's grown uh, a lot since then, obviously, um, but 120 years later, we've 350 plus clubs. We've over 13,000 members. Um, we have a development team that have multiple schools across the country linking in with those clubs. Uh, so a lot, a lot of new work has been done and we've come a long way in 120 years, thankfully. Uh, I think for me, uh, seeing Scott Evans and Chloe McGee qualify for the Olympics was a big one. And I remember uh, watching the guys play on court. Uh, so that's a big milestone for me. 
Um, there are plenty of other milestones throughout the history, um, but for me, it would be the two guys at the Olympics. So the museum was uh, started by Dick O'Rafferty and he's been uh, curating materials for a long time. A long time he's been pulling all these uh, articles together about the history of badminton in Ireland and a couple of years ago he got a space and they created the first ever Irish Badminton Museum. Which is a great achievement for Dick because he spent so many years doing it voluntarily and now he has a, a space to, to show off to the Irish public. Uh, last year the Japanese Badminton Federation actually travelled over to Ireland to see the museum uh, ahead of Tokyo 2020 because they're looking to start their own museum and they had Irish Ireland's museum uh, in mind to, to, to look at. Yeah, I mean, sport is hugely important in this country and uh, you just have to look at this campus. I mean, there's so many sports in this small location, but this campus is always busy. There's always some sporting event going on here, across the country. I mean, Irish people love sport. It's, it's in our DNA, uh, whether it's hurling or badminton or football, rugby, you know, it, it, there's a passion. And when Ireland are doing well and, and we have something, everybody comes out, whether they're a long-time supporter or if they just heard that they're playing, uh, Irish people just love getting behind an Irish team. Uh, when I started, they said, yeah, you play tennis on a badminton court. And I really had to, to start to, to change my technique, to, to work on it. And also the moving is different. You see, sometimes I'm, I'm turning still too much. In, in tennis, you, you turn a lot. You go for like eight, uh, eight. And in badminton, it's more uh, stop and go. After an accident in 1997 left her paralyzed from the waist down, Karin Suta-Era turned to wheelchair sports, which led her to winning a bronze medal in doubles tennis at the 2004 Athens Paralympic Games. These days, she's seen as an icon of para badminton, as a double world champion and a triple European champion. And the Swiss has set her sights on meddling at the next Paralympic Games in Tokyo. The biggest motivation is that I love the sport and I love to be with, yeah, with our team. That's a, a big inspiration for me to, yeah, to be in training with, with good people that I, that I like. I like to, to have some time for, for myself when, when it's a singles match or when it's a, if it's a doubles match to, to prepare early with a partner, to talk about the, the tactics, about, about the aim, but I don't have a headphones or, or music usually. Yeah, I just see that I have a quiet place for, for myself, for, for our team. I think we have a very um, um, we have a, a great Swiss team and we understand each other very well. And uh, my main sparring partner is Christian. Tim, I, I train uh, four times, uh, three or four times a week. And yeah, with, with Cynthia, I think um, we have a really, really good ta uh, team understanding. We enjoy playing together and we, yeah, we worked a lot on how we can support us, even if it's not going well, or how we can give energy to, to each other. And it's, yeah, I really enjoy playing with her. And it's not all days the same, you know, it's quite different. I work uh, part-time, 30%. So one day or maybe a second half of the day I'm working and the others are training. I have two different training centres where I train. One is close from Basel, the other is uh, closer to Zurich or Baden. I work for the Swiss uh, Wheelchair Sport Federation and I do their um, education courses for, for monitors. For, we have wheelchair clubs and then I also do sport consultation with people not that long in a wheelchair and yeah, talking about possibilities of sport, see what they, they would like to, what they, their goal is. Mm, I think it's, it, it's not bad, we get some good financial support, I could re reduce my work, but of course it, it could be better, it would be great to have really a center where we can train, train together, where we have the sports hall, fitness, 
fitness center where we can sleep. There, it's it's not yet uh, ideal. I think. That's all the time we have on this episode of Badminton Unlimited. Join us again next week for another special edition, this time on the history of the game we all love. The game originated in India, uh, went back to England, got modified, and uh, probably has uh, become one of the most uh, popular uh, sports in the country now. In the meantime, remember to log on to bwfbadminton.com for the latest news and features on the sport. Until next time, it's bye-bye and stay safe.